All right, well, good morning, everyone. I think most of our guests have uh, arrived here, so I want to say welcome. And I, again, appreciate you taking the time to uh, join with us this morning. And I see uh, representatives from uh, Mecklenburg and Greensville, and I think there's a, a couple other on. So again, just thank you. Um, my name is Chad Patton. I'm the Dean of Career and Occupational Technology for South South Virginia Community College. And so the purpose of, uh, of this meeting is to um, just go over some of the offerings we'll have uh, this fall in the enrollment. And uh, we've got some new offerings, some great opportunities for um, students in our area. So I appreciate all the instructors that have uh, have joined with us. Some of them are here, but we're staying a good six feet apart from each other, and uh, it's good to see everybody here. Um, and for those joining us uh, at home, so um, as we as we go through, I will uh, introduce them a little bit more formally, and then ask them to introduce themselves and uh, tell a little bit uh, about the program. Um, also, this uh, morning we have Wendy Ezel. And she's one of our dual enrollment coordinators for the college. And she's doing a great job. She's uh, set it, seated over here. And as we're having this Zoom meeting, we're also broadcasting live through Facebook. So uh, she's monitoring that and will uh, handle all those questions and things like that. Now, as for, for you guys and those of us that are here in, in the Zoom um, application, please use the chat uh, field if you've got a question. And if we don't get to it right as we're broadcasting, we promise we will uh, we will answer um, the questions um, and, and get that information back to you. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't just say uh, a heartfelt thank you to um, our K-12 partners. I know that uh, we, we certainly as a college have felt challenges through all this. And, you know, it's uh, really, really changing your whole life, the way you do things very quickly. And, uh, I know that uh, our K-12 partners have had to do the same and um, had to scramble for resources and had to really uh, change the way they were uh, operating. And so uh, we know it's a lot of work and we, uh, we really appreciate everything that, that you guys have done. So just to start off, I'll tell you briefly a little bit about uh, the Career Occupation and Technical Division. And so that's, that's the division that, that we work in. And, um, and as you know, um, as, as a nation, we went through this period of time where we thought everyone had to get a degree to be successful in life, right? You had to get a bachelor's degree if you ever wanted to uh, earn uh, a, a sustaining wage and, and to be successful. And of course, we know that that certainly is not the case uh, anymore. And uh, the name of the game is uh, skill and certification. And you don't have to go away for your college to have a, a wonderful career and, and to make good money. And so um, that is certainly true of the programs we offer here. And I believe very strongly in them because I've worked for the college about 20 years and I've really seen a lot of success stories. And I've seen uh, the students come through who maybe were like me and had trouble sitting still, school, right, and didn't like to do a lot of homework, but if you put something in their hands, they, uh, they really became engaged. And so um, in our welding programs, in our electrical HVAC, uh, in our IT programs, we've seen that since students go on and uh, just have amazing careers. So we have uh, a wonderful group of faculty that are they're very skilled and it's an honor to, to serve with them, but I will say this before I start introducing them and have them talk about their programs. Um, certainly their skills, certainly they, they have a lot of knowledge about their field, but I really enjoy serving with them because they really care. They really care about their students, and I see them go the extra mile um, with them, and so it's, a, it's really a privilege to, to serve with them. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to turn it over to some of these people, and I'll try to moderate as best I can, which is probably not my strongest skill set. But uh, I want you to hear from the instructors, actually, um, about their program and, and the things that are offered. So first, we will have uh, electrical. Electrical. And um, we're, we're actually having this program. It's going to be new. We've had elements of electrical and other programs, but we're having an industrial electrical program for the fall and it's going to be offered in South Hill and 
that's also going to be offered at the JHD campus in Keysville for those counties up there. Uh, so we have Mr. Scott Edmonds here with us this morning and Mr. Chris Foster. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them. And uh, gentlemen, uh, if you would, let's do Scott first. Uh, just talk, you know, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your program, and then Scott, after you're done, uh, we'll hand it over uh, to Chris Foster. Okay, so I want to go ahead and turn it over to Scott. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Scott Edmonds. I've been at the college about eight years now. I'm actually a graduate of SCCC many years ago with an electronics associate degree. Uh, then I worked in commercial industrial fields for years with that degree. So it's that two-year degree has been very good to me uh, throughout my career. And we took high performance technology for the last 15 years of taught that program, and we decided to change it into something more of the electrical and HVAC trades. So I'm going to talk about the electricity first. And the students will come for their uh, fall and spring semesters, and they will get 31, um, excuse me, 29 credits, 14 one semester, 15 a second semester. And they'll come out with an electricity certificate. I will allow them to get into the field as a helper or an apprenticeship type thing. They're going to have enough skills and abilities out of high school to work for a company doing electrical work. And that was one of our goals to prepare a student just out of high school to have the ability to get a job. In our area, a lot of the companies, they're aging. Uh, the people who run these and own these companies are very close to retirement in the next 10 years. Some are of, about that range. And we get calls constantly about can you find a skilled person to come and perform these skills for us? And we think that high school students will be a great opportunity to learn these skills in electricity. And eventually probably we'll be able to own one of their own companies one day with the right uh, applications and abilities and stuff. Uh, I don't have the curriculum in front of me, but if you would send me a message, I can email it to you with us being from not on campus all the time. It is on my computer at work. So uh, I'll get the curriculum to you um, later. And, uh, we think it'll be a great opportunity for them to learn the skills they have. They'll take electricity classes. They'll take classes in electric motors. Uh, also a, a PLC class, which is a programmable logic controller. They'll learn the ability to uh, troubleshoot with that. Also, we do some other classes like team concepts and problem solving that teaches a, a student how to problem solve in the real world, how to handle conflict uh, with coworkers, supervisors, subordinates, or what have you. So they'll learn the ability to do that. And after they complete all of these skills, they will uh, have uh, NCCR electricity certificates. Uh, they have a level one and a level two will be the ability to sit and take those tests to have a nationwide credential that allow them to obtain a job. And with NCCR, they also are on a national registry that will allow them to be searched. They can search for jobs and employers can search them for jobs. And that's about it, uh, Chad. All right, thank you, sir. I apologize for the way I stepped aside a minute to check on something. Uh, thank you, Scott. I, I really appreciate that and, uh, and all that you do for, uh, for the program. And, uh, I guess some people will probably uh, ask, and just tell us what, what time in the morning do you have students? It's five days a week. And uh, you just talk a little bit about the day a student would have, like when they begin and uh, when their break is and, and when they end up. Yeah, sure. I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> so the students will come to um, the Lake Country Advanced Knowledge Center in Southfield from 8 to 11. Uh, um, Monday through Fridays, they work on the college schedule. So when the college starts, they start coming to class and they go for the fall semester until we stop for our Christmas break. Again, in the spring for the same format. Uh, during these classes, they're a combination. Some are purely class, but most of these classes are half class, half lab. So the student would perform, would go over the uh, theories in the classes, then go in our lab in the back and perform the hands-on lab materials. And predominantly, it's about 50% lab and a 50% classroom. Uh, most of their work is done on Canvas. So they have a Canvas account. They'll log in and learn how to use that. We teach them, it's a good skill when they go into any other training uh, services or college and stuff. They learn how to navigate our learning management system. Uh, and students enjoy doing it that way. Uh, we provide all the textbooks for them. All the um, information is given to them, and they can log on and do their work, and they go in the back and do labs. And we'll do lab reports where they write up what they do in the lab, in some of the labs. Some of the labs is just hands-on demonstrations. They show they can do the abilities. With the NCCR certifications, 
they have tests they take that are written, but they also have performance tests where they will perform the skill and prove that they can do it what they learn in the classroom. So it's a great way to get some hands-on training. Uh, they'll be very skilled and very, uh, have a lot of ability. They won't be masters of it yet, but they'll have the ability to perform these jobs. Uh, Perfect, thank you, and I appreciate you bringing up the, the certifications. Now, at this time, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Mr. Chris Foster, and he will be operating the, the same program, but he's going to be doing that, uh, as I said, in Keysville. So, good morning, Chris. Appreciate you being here, and if you would, will you start off and introduce uh, yourself and tell a little bit about your background, and um, and just talk about uh, maybe some of the things that you're you're trying to do uh, in Keysville, this is new for Keysville, so you can talk about your lab and, and what your ideas are for, for the future. So good morning, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Chris Foster, uh, new to the team here with Southside Virginia Community College. Uh, like Scott, uh, I've been through the programs here at SVCC uh, years ago uh, through the electrical and HVAC program. Uh, since then, I've been uh, involved in industrial maintenance for about the last 20 years, and I'm now signed up to the team here at South South Virginia Community College and I represent the John H. Daniel campus in Keys and I'm the instructor for the industrial technology there, and like I said, we'll be starting the dual enrollment program uh, for the first time this year uh, in the fall of 2020. Our program will be set up very similar to what uh, Scott was explaining to you. Uh, we'll have the uh, electrical uh, program working through the NCCER program, uh, which is the uh, National Center for Construction, Education, and Research. Uh, that program is good for the students, again, like Scott said, to give them uh, not only testing, but the hands-on skills that they'll need um, to, to advance their careers uh, uh, in the electrical side. Um, that gives a national um, database that the students will be entered into that can be searched by uh, contractors uh, for them to find uh, qualified personnel uh, to hire on to their workforce. Um, and to, um, to give the students the opportunity to go in and look for uh, the jobs that are available out there uh, in, in, that, uh, in that area program. Um, uh, once they finish uh, this program uh, for us in Kiesel, uh, again, they'll have you know, 500 hours of instruction, uh, which will also go towards their journeyman certification uh, for electricians. Uh, they'll have completed, like Scott said, the get in electricity. Uh, from South South Virginia Community College and also gain those uh, credentials for the NCCER program. Uh, also, these students will have, by the end of the program through dual enrollment, uh, they'll have uh, um, completed uh, about 50% of the credits they will also need to work toward our associate's degree uh, in applied sciences for industrial maintenance technician uh, if they decide to go on with that program as well. Um, so that's kind of what we have to offer. Again, like Chad said, you know, we're, this is a new program for us in Kiesel. Uh, so we're trying to get labs and everything set up there. We've got uh, a good electrical uh, program going to for the adults uh, classes at night. Uh, so we'll just kind of carry that over and offer that to the uh, students uh, during the day as well for doing enrollment programs. Uh, we've got the electrical lab that's up there now uh, with also some, uh, some residential stuff that we've done so far for like residential wiring and, and applications like that. So it'll be a lot of hands-on, uh, you know, physical wiring, you know, working with kind of, uh, you know, actually um, troubleshooting using test meters and different things like that, uh, different tools of the trade. Uh, that CCER program also goes through communication skills, such as working on communications through emails, through text messages. Uh, also uh, creating resumes and things like, like that. So this program will really help those students uh, once they complete the programs here with us through their high school, uh, can also go out and uh, it'll, it'll really give them a head start as far as finding a career uh, after, after that's completed. Um, 
So again, we're excited about offering that program uh, for the for the John H. Daniel campus up in Diesel. Um, looking forward to working with all of you guys uh, to help get the students in, get them involved, and get that program up and going uh, so we can benefit those, those students and then get them out there into the workforce. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate you bringing out how many you know, credits this is. This is a year-long program. It's offered in South Hill and in Keysville. And it's 15 credits one semester, 14 credits uh, the next semester. And uh, as Chris said, and as uh, Scott said, that this, this will um, allow students to be employable as soon as they get, get through this one year program, but also they can uh, continue on with the college maybe after graduation and receive a degree as well in our technical studies and industrial technology degree. Um, that's a good segue into the next program I want to bring up, and that's HVAC. Uh, heating and air conditioning, and uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Vincent Brown to come and be ready and talk about that. Uh, but I, I'll just say, like electrical, uh, HVAC uh, is very in demand, uh, both in our in our region, statewide, and uh, nationally as well. And this is very evident because we um, had a, a major employer. Uh, it was actually trained uh, to come to us and ask how they could help prepare more technicians because they were in, in desperate need and again they, they make great salaries uh, they, have, they have great jobs and so train was so interested they even uh, donated lots and lots of equipment um, to the, the center here in South Hill and so we appreciate that partnership and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Brown Good morning, my name is Vincent Brown. I'm Associate Professor of Industrial Technology. I've been here at the college for 16 years now. Um, I'm a graduate of the engineering program at Old Dominion University. I too teach um, the dual enrollment electricity and HVAC. Scott Evans and I work um, hand in hand with the HVAC and electricity program. Um, with the HVAC program, the students will be like um, Dr. Patton said, it's a it's a trade that is very heavily in demand right now. Um, I just had a local company recently, as recent as this week, to ask me if we could send them some some training or some entry level HVAC technicians there. Um, in the HVAC program, the students will be getting many certifications. One would be um, the EPA 608 certifications, which gives them the license and the ability to be able to handle and work with refrigerants. And they will also get the NCCER core certifications. That NCCER core certification also goes with that electrical, those electrical certifications that Mr. Adams were talking about. And the students will also get the NCCER um, levels one and two certifications as well and these are national recognized credentials and a lot of companies today they care more about or just as much about the certifications and credentials as they actually do the actual degree so those credentials are very very important although scott and i are changing our program this year and we they were speaking about how the program prepares students not only to go into to the work environment but to continue their education scott and i we've had we've had really good success with our program we have a student that graduated the program that's an engineer at nasa langley we have three students that are currently with dominion power one here at both plant in um Emporia and one in Richmond, one in Norfolk or the Virginia Beach area. We have a young lady that completed the program that's with Rose Royce and Prince, uh, Prince George. We have several, uh, about nine students that I can think of that left the program and they are, went to the apprenticeship program at the Newport New Shipyard. They are all doing very well and several left the course of engineer. So the dual enrollment program, it does give the students a, found, a, a firm foundation to start just a job, but a very, very good um, career. Um, Dr. Patton was talking to you about the donations from training for the HVAC program. 
Um, if you were to contact myself, and I'm sure that Mr. Evans would um, be available also, but if you were to contact us and want to come and tour the site and see any of the stuff that we do here, because we do a lot of hands-on, a lot of fun, a lot of, it's a very engaging program. The students also have take get credits or take a business course that teaches them, you know, process management, lean, and some six sigma. Um, it's a continuous quality control class that that go, really helps them a lot in industry and manufacturing as well. So again, my name is Vincent Brown, and like I said, if you were to contact me, I would be more than glad to meet you here at the center and to give you a tour of our lab and to show you exactly what it is we have to offer. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Appreciate that. And uh, HVAC is uh, a very strong program, and there's lots of demand in that. I've really appreciated uh, both Mr. Brown and Scott's uh, work in this program and, and to make it grow. And uh, it certainly um, is very, very strong in demand. So thank you uh, for doing that. This will be offered in South Hill. It won't be ready for fall, it'll be ready for the next fall. And the reason is, is there's a national certification that um, we need to go through so the Virginia Department of Education will count it. And so the high school students can get it and they'll count as an elective as they go through. Uh, there's no trouble for us to get that. Unfortunately, as you know, COVID-19 uh, disrupted a lot of things. And, and this certification actually certifies the lab. It certifies the, the instructor and, of course, some, the equipment that you have, things like that. But a big part of the accreditation process is a site visit, which, of course, is no longer possible right here. So while this won't be offered in this fall, it will be offered uh, in the, the next fall. And Chris Foster, who you just heard from previously, he will be running an ELE program for a year and then do HVAC for a year and then alternate back and forth. So uh, all the school systems around Keysville, those surrounding counties will also have the opportunity uh, to take HVAC courses as well. All right, well again, let me just encourage you, I'm gonna take a break right here and just encourage you, if you have a question, please put it in the chat. As Mr. Brown said, you can certainly reach out to uh, to us either on social media or uh, through our regular um, college email. And I see that uh, Lori Michelson has joined us. She is another coordinator for dual enrollment, and she is on the uh, Keysville side and kind of the, the northwest area of our service region. So good morning, Lori. And uh, we're about to um, introduce Mr. David Braun to talk about well. Welding is one of our signature programs here at the college for good reason. We have uh, great instructors. And again, it's another one of those disciplines where students um, do very well and, and leave us and go on and uh, get exciting careers. And something else that I'll bring out, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, but uh, all of these professions uh, that these programs lead to are essential professions, right? And so many of our programs uh, lead to these essential jobs. And, uh, so we, we appreciate uh, all of our students and the work that they're doing in this current environment. So uh, I believe I saw Mr. Braun uh, on. David, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you if you're ready. And uh, then I'll turn it over to Mr. Evans so he can talk about uh, welding on the, on the Chris Anna side. But if you would, just introduce yourself, tell a little bit about yourself and uh, and then the program, and if you've got any um, student success stories uh, that you'd like to highlight, we'd appreciate it if you would uh, share those uh, as well. Uh, good morning. I'm not sure how great my internet connection is, uh, um, but uh, yeah, I've uh, been teaching welding at Southside for 10 years now, and um, our dual enrollment program, we usually, uh, like to keep it for seniors uh, because they finish the career study certificate in a year, uh, which trains them for entry level wel welding jobs. And uh, the thing about welding is that it's a, it's a hand skill. And uh, if you don't use it regularly, uh, you get rusty, 
and your ability goes down. And the reason we try to keep it for seniors is because uh, we want them to be uh, as sharp as they can be from a skill standpoint when they graduate to go find work. Um, so the thing about welding is, is that, you know, uh, welders fuse metal and we all trust our lives to welds, you know, many, many times a day, uh, from vehicles to bridges, to buildings, things like that. And, um, the way welders fuse that metal so that it stays together is they, uh, manipulate an electric arc. So a welding machine, uh, transforms electricity and the welder initiates the electrical connection uh, and then uh, breaks it so it's a bad electrical connection. Uh, it's kind of similar to uh, your jumper cable sparking when you, when you uh, jump start a car. And that arc generates a heat uh, that's uh, as hot as the surface of the sun and as bright. So the welders have to work under a mask to protect their eyes from all of that uh, bright light and the sparks flying off and, and things like that. And um, they have to control that arc very precisely um, and move it along a joint. Uh, so the angle of their electrode and the distance and the speed and all of those things, the welder has to learn how to control that. And they learn to control it by visual cues uh, at the point of the arc where the metal is molten. It's called the weld puddle. And um, it's about the size of a dime usually. So, you know, uh, basically our students have to learn to work in total darkness, focus on an area the size of a dime and move their arms, hands and body in a way to make sure that that arc uh, stays uh, constant so that they get good fusion in that weld so that uh, the end users of whatever they're welding are safe. Um, and, you know, nothing in life really prepares you for that. So what we do is we have our students uh, performing welds repeatedly and continuously. Um, and because the stakes are so high with structural steel and, 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 uh, and the assemblies that we trust our lives to, uh, the welding industry has come up with a lot of codes, uh, you know, ground rules and minimum standards for how things should be uh, fused together. And so uh, in these codes are tests, you know, if a company is going to produce something, they have to prove that the people who are making these welds actually have the skill to do it. And so what we do is we train these students to make these welds with complete fusion, and then we have trained them to take these tests um, and certify that they uh, certify the tests that they take. So um, we're training them for real world uh, uh, work environments, and 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 we do this by keeping them. Uh, working as much as possible. Now there is a, a, a knowledge component and book component, but I would say about 80% of their time is spent uh, actually welding in a, in a work environment, which also teaches them how to work. And, and that sounds really uh, oversimplified, but uh, these students are, a lot of them are used to going and sitting in a desk in a classroom and zoning out or figuring out a way to play with their phone or whatever, you know, so they don't have to pay any more attention. and you know, figuring out ways to you know, cheat on the tests or whatever. Um, but with uh, for those students that, you know, that, that don't do well sitting still, we keep them very active. And we also uh, show them what's expected in the work environment when they graduate, you know, how they're expected to act uh, and perform and work uh, in order to get a paycheck and keep a job. So we've had a lot of success. Uh, you know, we've had students go work for, uh, you know, Honeywell. Uh, I had one student uh, two years ago who just really, really, really wanted to um, learn how to make race car chassis and, you know, worked with him on his TIG welding and tubing and stuff like that. And he went and found a job in uh, near Charlotte. And um, last I heard, he's making six figures building NASCAR frames. So, um, you know, and, and and, and some of the students come in and they find out that welding isn't for them. I mean, you know, uh, being in a loud environment around a lot of smoke and uh, bright lights and loud noises. And, uh, you know, it, it's some people are wired for that and some people aren't. And, um, I haven't been able to stop doing it since I struck my first arc 20 some years ago. So, uh, but uh, the students seem to enjoy it. 
I enjoy it, you know, we have a lot of fun and they wind up uh, learning a skill that'll enable them to take care of themselves and feed their families and have a nice life. That's it, I'm done. Any questions? Thank you, David, I, I appreciate that. And, uh, David actually started our program uh, in Keysville. We really appreciate um, all, the, all the work that, that he's done. And you know, he, he mentioned uh, certifications and uh, David serves on the American Welding Society's National Advisory Board, which is uh, certainly a, a, a high honor. And we're we're uh, glad to have him. And uh, he stays very busy, uh, just like Mr. Evans. It's a lot of a lot of work, a lot of physical work. I, I think one of the the highlights of this program and what an opportunity is that uh, David is a certified welding inspector, and uh, so. As students go through welding classes here at Southside and they, they weld coupons, um, we get those to David. He actually comes and picks those up and uh, does a destructive test on them. He um, bends them and, and cuts them. And if the welder, if the student's done a good job, you know, the, the test plate will, um, will show that. And so this is a tremendous amount of work. And if you had those certifications, you got that somewhere else some of those and David you can correct me uh, if I misspeak here but I think I remember uh, seeing that some of them were like 200 to you know, six or eight hundred dollars uh, a test and uh, we do that for free uh, for our students because of um, Mr. Evans and David's uh, hard work and uh, there, we have a, a very good success rate of students passing these tests uh, and a lot of them walk out of here as they graduate with many, many of these under their belt. And it didn't cost uh, anything but uh, the tuition you know, for the program. So it's a, a great value, and we appreciate that. And again, David uh, is in Keysville, and he does dual enrollment and teaches adults there. And then in South Hill, at the Lake Country Advanced Knowledge Center, we have Mr. John Evans. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him and just ask him to introduce himself and, uh, and talk about uh, his program here on this side. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, John Evans. I'm the well instructor here at uh, Lake Country. Um, I was a um, welder for the um, Boilermakers, Union Boilermakers, for years. And, and I was a welder for um, Dominion Power for years um, before coming here, and um, I've enjoyed my time here. I've been here for five years now. I've enjoyed working with uh, Dr. Patton and, and uh, David Brown and the other um, instructors here at Lake Country. Um, we kind of co um, collaborate a lot on things that we do here. Um, the NCCR stuff that we do. Um, is one of the safety programs that we have implemented here for the dual enrollment um, um, kids when they come through. And um, we implement that um, because we know that um, in this um, construction uh, arena, there's a, a lot of safety stuff that you have to go through to, uh, you know, um, that we're not um, acclimated to, especially coming from a, a home environment. Um, where everything is, is, you're not used to all the loud noises and machinery moving and, and stuff. So we implemented the NCCER program here and um, they go through that and get a um, certificate through that, especially the first part of it, which is the introductory to it um, and is the safety part of it. And then we go into the um, welding part of it. Um, our program consists of uh, six different modules, which is the uh, um, welding 120, welding 123, and welding um, 124 here the first semester. And then we go through um, welding 160, 161, and 164. Uh, those numbers probably don't mean much, but um, the welding 120, and 123, and 124 are basically stick welding classes. Um, and they're um, classes that are done with uh, plates, but with backing, and then they're tested that implemented without backing. Um, then there's the flux core, um, which is the 161, and the hard wire um, make welding classes. 
And then we have the TIG welding classes, which incorporates some stainless, some aluminum, and some carbon welding. Um, and as David said, that yeah, we um, put the uh, kids through uh, extensive welding, and that's to um, make sure that they have it, you know, down pat, and they can go out and get a job and uh, and and support themselves and the family. And at the age of uh, 18, 19, coming out of high school, they can go somewhere and get a job um, as an apprentice or a helper or or sometimes they even can, uh, all depends on how they apply themselves and even get the uh, a first class welders job. Um, we have some that go out and here to go to um, the shipyard and have some that come out of our classes and start their own business. We got one on the pipeline now that's on his own business. So um, you can go in different arenas and anywhere in the United States and um, and make a living as a welder. Um, David being the AWS uh, well inspector, um, when they we do our plate tests here, we send them to him and he bend them. And those plate tests are, are basically given all over the United States. So when they leave here, they have some idea of, of what they're going to go in, go into and run into in the workforce. And um, I'm glad that uh, I have an opportunity and we have an opportunity um, to um, touch those uh, guys that come to our class, especially young guys, give them some kind of direction. Uh, even if they're not going to do a, a welding as a career, it, they will have something that they can go into and maybe make some extra money on the side. Um, classes are taught here from 8 to 11, um, Monday through Fridays, um, and they enter with a career study certificate. And, and if they apply themselves with the plate test, they end up with a certification. They can get up to about maybe 20 certifications um, in the plate tests. And you get paperwork with that as, as, uh, along with your certificate with that. Um, and we also, um, during the course of the year, um, schedules some um, people to come in. Maybe some guys that have um, been through the welding program to talk with them. Uh, companies come in like Nucor, um, uh, Scott and Vincent have had um, Balkan to come in and talk to our students. And so we have um, people to come in, um, companies that come in and kind of talk with them. We have had the um, boilermakers to come in, uh, also the union pipe fitters to come in at some um, time. So we try to introduce them and give them as much information about um, what we're doing, what to expect, and give them a lot of knowledge that uh, you know we have to give uh, give to them. So um, it's it's, it's uh, very uh, challenging sometimes. They're gonna get burnt, um, but we have all the uh, protective equipment here uh, for them: the shields, uh, gloves, jackets. Um, they wear leather shoes in, and um, we'll take care of it. Thank you. Have yeah. any questions? I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Evans, and thank you for bringing up safety. That is uh, so important, um, and it's something that uh, employers really expect everyone that comes in to have a, a good grasp on safety and know how to work safely. And so. Safety is interwoven throughout uh, our curricula and in many programs, and it's so very important, especially in um, in welding and then also in electricity and HVAC. You know, you can get a paper cut writing uh, a paper in English, right? But uh, it's a little bit different in the welding booth, and so uh, safety is uh, is uh, the first job of the faculty, and then we really teach our students to. To be safe, and so I appreciate all the good work that, that they do there. Um, our instructors are very patient; they're very knowledgeable, and welding, uh, like many of our programs, has its own language. And so, uh, when I got in this role, uh, I remember David Braun would say things about welding, and I only understood about half of what he was saying. Uh, so I actually took a welding class when Mr. Evans taught me, and I can tell you, uh, very patient <laughs> and very helpful. And uh, so it's always a great experience. And it's one of those programs where 
you just see it change lives. And uh, so we're, we're very glad to have uh, both uh, Mr. Evans and uh, David Braun. So um, we're about at 40 minutes. So I'm going to try to keep this as close as I can to an hour. We're going to talk about precision machining next and Robert Hudson. And then we are going to uh, talk about uh, our newest program, Psych. Um, and then I'm going to introduce just a couple of folks on our Bill and Woman team. And there'll be a, a time for questions at the end. So right now, I'm going to introduce Mr. Robert Hudson. Have him tell a little bit about himself. And uh, he does more than precision machining uh, in Emporia, which is where he's he's based out of. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it uh, over to him. Thank you. Hello, I'm Robert Hudson. Uh, I've been in college for about three years, but sometimes on a part time basis, for 30 years on a full time basis. I uh, have a career in machine design. Uh, I graduated from Virginia Tech, mechanical engineering, with a degree. I worked in industrial maintenance most of my life. I was a machine shop for um, 13 years. The precision machine has both lifelong skills that people may be just as a hobby later on in life. A lot of people have little ways, build models, do work around the house. We'll teach people how to do basic things like drill, sharpen drills, how to grind, safety, safe and grind. The second part will be in CNC or computer numerical control. And that's really where you program a computer. And a computer controls a machine that does all the grinding, all the shaping of uh, a machine of a part. We'll also have uh, drafting, blueprint reading, uh, use of precision instruments and in measuring. So there are really two, two facets the computer control part and the manual control. Uh, you learn the basics on manual, you learn to use your ears, sight, and, and feeling to see if the machine is going the way you like it to. In CNC, things happen so rapidly that you just got to trust that the program the program is going to operate well. The machine is flooded with coolant, you can't even see the part when it's been machined. That's really where the job opportunities are now. Manufacturing is coming back to this area, but it's in the form of CNC or manufactured parts using computer control equipment. Uh, it's been good for my family. I, when I first got involved in machining, we only had 20 codes that we used in the CNC. Back then, it wasn't CNC, it was on paper tape. My son is in CNC machining, and uh, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much he makes, he makes my salary look poor, but he really loves the job. One part of machine which students don't like to think about is it's pure math. It's all geometry, math, and trigonometry. If you remember back when you were in high school, you said, Why will I ever use this stuff? We'll kind of sneak students into the math, we'll ease it into they won't even know they're learning geometry and trig and math all over again. We'll make it fun for them. Uh, safety is always top priority. So we'll begin with breaking old unsafe habits and installing new safe habits. Clean up is a part of no one likes, but clean up and shop is paramount. We have to do that every day. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Thank you. I appreciate that, sir. That's a good point. And uh, these technical programs, they, there is a lot of math education that goes on. And what we found, and I'm sure if you in the education realm, you know this, is when it's applied in that, uh, students seem to catch on quicker, you know, and uh, certainly in welding and electrical, you got Ohm's Law and different things, and, and, um, and HVAC, you got load calculations, all of these sorts of things. We have found that students who maybe struggled with math in a seated classroom type environment, when they put their hands on things and actually see the math that they're working with, um, you, sometimes you see great gains uh, in their ability. And so we appreciate uh, all the hard work that goes into these, these programs. And again, Mr. Hudson and the Precision Machining Lab is in Emporia, Virginia. And certainly that would be available to Greensville uh, county students and also uh, Brunswick uh, if they wanted to transport uh, down there. So 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Hudson, again. This time I want to discuss our uh, last program for the morning, and it's our site program, which stands for Center of Information Technology Excellence. And uh, this program is offered in South Hill, and it's in partnership with uh, Microsoft. And of course, as you know, uh, we've had uh, just an explosion of IT technical related possibilities and opportunities in our area. And Site is a good example. Uh, Microsoft has donated equipment as uh, helped with uh, curriculum development and makes uh, guest presentations and things of that nature. And so we're, we're very appreciative of their partnership. And likewise, I'm very appreciative of the great faculty that we have uh, in this program. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ms. Kelly LaPray here in just a second. Uh, I will say that uh, SITE is so popular that we have actually seen uh, a good number of students come to us in the mornings here at South Hill, but there was such a demand that we actually also had an afternoon cohort uh, of, of students. So, uh, good morning, Ms. Kelly. Good morning. Good to see you. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and tell everybody about yourself and uh, the wonderful opportunities that SITE Okay, I'm just smiling because I love my dual enrollment student. And when Dr. Patton first talked to me about, I've been teaching for the college for 16 years and mainly online in Alberta. And um, Dr. Patton came to me about um, doing dual enrollment. And I was like, well, I don't know, but I really found it to be a passion for me at the college. They are my, my babies is what I call them. But anyway, um, so um, again, 16 years, I'm the Associate Professor of IT. Um, I have background in cybersecurity and networking as well as office and applications and things of that nature. Um, so a little bit about our program. Um, like Dr. Patton said, we have a morning uh, cohort. They come from eight to 11 and it's five days a week. I teach um, actually in it one day a week because I'm spread out between there in Alberta and online, whereas um, Ms. Pendergrass, who is the coordinator of the site program um, in South Hill, she teaches some and does some certification prep. And then Tommy Wright, who has taught with me the whole time I've been there, he teaches the other classes. Um, so what they receive is, a so the morning cohort, they're going for one career study certificate. The afternoon, because we started that new, they're coming two years, they're gonna receive one career studies the first year or work towards one and then finish it and then the second one the second year. And they come on, on in the afternoons from 1.30, well, 1.40 to 3.15. The bus will bring them or they can drive. Um, so some of the things that we do with our students or they take are um, like intro to networking, um, microcomputer software operating systems. Um, they take PC troubleshooting hardware. They take server. They take programming. They take security. But the cool thing about all these courses is they prepare them um, to take certifications in those areas, as well as these certifications are CompTIA, and um, CompTIA is an industry recognized um, organization. Um, throughout, they're internationally known, and to obtain one of these certifications in the IT world is of great um, significance when it comes to employment. Um, Microsoft does have connections with us. They come in and they um, speak with our students as well as they have backed us and given us a lot of support um, on equipment and funding for things for that program. Also, I uh, know Ms. Pendergrass took the kids um, last year to view um, Pickett, as that was her previous job in IT, working at Fort Pickett. So they got to go around and look in um, some of the IT jobs there and meet um, some of her coworkers that she used to work with and discuss different things with them. Um, I found it very um, rewarding to be in dual enrollment. We have watched our children go on. I've written a lot of letters of recommendation. Um, I have seen where some have gone to UVA. One of ours went to UVA 
um, actually this past fall. Um, another one went to Bridgewater uh, a couple years ago. Another student of ours went to Randolph-Macon. He still keeps in touch with me. He's doing really well. Um, I had to write him a letter of recommendation to actually work <clears throat> in the IT department at um, Randolph-Macon, as well as I can't say enough about how important it is that they pass the certifications and um, we had a pretty good group of past the A plus CompTIA um, certification, which was amazing. I was sitting on pins and needles the afternoon after they were tested and I couldn't wait. So I called Ms. Pendergrass. I was like, okay, tell me, you know, how many passed, how many passed. So um, I think we work with a really good team. Our students like um, to come to class. Um, when we miss them, when they don't have break, they tell us they wish they would have had class. So that means a lot. But um, the good thing about this certificate too, it gives you know you the credentials for um, entry level IT skills and networking, but also these courses will transfer to other universities as well as Southside. And if you're interested, um, I've had a couple students as well that um, will move on to the community college and then they just finish up and they receive their associates in IST with the network and specialization. So I'm glad to answer any questions. Um, Dr. Patton, I'm sure we'll share our contact information with you all and I hope to see some of you in my future classes. Have a great day. Thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate that. And uh, again, through all these programs, I'm just very, um, proud of the care that all of them have for their students and you can hear it in your voices. She mentioned again certifications which is really the name of the game and uh, CompTIA is the industry standard. A plus is a very 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 difficult test. Uh, only about 33 percent of uh, IT professionals in the business can pass uh, a plus and so uh, to say that we had I think it was four it may have been the more for high school students to pass a plus is phenomenal and um, I actually challenged that class and I, I made a bet with them we uh, we were hoping we'd get two and two's a miracle you know it's, it's just such an achievement and I, I told them I would cook them a, a steak lunch I do steak and baked potatoes for lunch for their class and uh, I had no idea I would ever be called on that. And uh, instead of two, we had four. So, uh, and then of course COVID-19 hit and I didn't get to cook for them, but I intend to do that at some point because that's such a great uh, accomplishment. And uh, thank you, Kelly and Tommy and Crystal and uh, all of you guys that make that happen. I would like to say though too, um, IT is everywhere. And whether you're going in healthcare, whether you're going in manufacturing, wh whatever you're going into, uh, everything today has an IT component, right? Um, you know, uh, you, an IT technician works on MRI machines and all, and all kinds of things and the bare belts for industry. And so IT is just everywhere. So it's a, a great program. Uh, that's all of our presentations on our program. So I'm going to introduce some of our dual enrollment uh, folks here in just, just a few minutes. And if you've got questions, please go ahead and put those in. We'll try to answer them. We don't get to them on the broadcast, we will answer them uh, afterwards. I, I did want to say though, um, these programs uh, right now, they're in such demand and there's such a need for these that uh, Mary Jane Elkins and our foundation works very closely with uh, the Tobacco Commission. And we actually receive scholarships uh, each year to reduce the tuition and the cost burden on school for these programs because they are in such demand. And it's, it's something that we apply for year after year. and It's not a sure thing, but uh, we're very happy to get that. And we're very uh, pleased with the support um, that, that both the commission and others give to us. And so uh, we're, we're glad to be able to offer that to, to our students and to save parents money and help young people on their way to have a great career. And so again, as I said, we have Wendy Ezel here, who uh, is a dual enrollment coordinator, and she handles the schools kind of on the uh, southern and uh, eastern side of our service area. And uh, she works it with uh, Lori Michelson. So uh, I'm going to ask her just to come in and, and closing, just introduce herself and uh, and.
and then we'll uh, uh, see if we've got any questions. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Michelle Evans, if she's available, just to close us off, and uh, we'll be right at our hour. So thank you. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to say a quick thank you um, first to everybody who joined us. I know it's uh, a little lengthy, but we wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to hear about the programs. And then, of course, a big thank you to our faculty who joined us and shared with you guys what they do here. Um, hopefully, it was a benefit for you guys to take this time out of your day. Um, I'm not going to hold you up anymore. Um, I do want to just say, I uh, reiterate what Chad has said. Um, if you have any questions, if your students have questions, um, please reach out to us. Um, Lori and I are here to field those questions. Of course, Dr. Cadden and Dr. Edmonds um, will do everything uh, we can to get those answered for you. So if you um, would chat those in the Facebook Live, we'll do that. But if you are going to um, had those questions um, compiled and want to send them to us, so that's great too. We'll answer them either way. Right. Thank you, Miss Wendy. And I just can't brag on uh, her and Lori and Dr. Michelle enough. Um, it's uh, going home, it's so very important. I appreciate the work they do. Um, Miss Lori, do you have uh, any, any statements or comments that you would like to make before I turn it over to uh, Michelle? I just again want to thank you all for your time and for those school divisions just to let you know these programs that we have do complement the programs at your high school and please use our resources our faculty our facilities um, we definitely make our students competitive with their counterparts across the state and the nation so I can't speak highly enough about our CTE programs we have here the collaboration so please use us and, and let us influence your students give them skills and send them out into the workforce and a big thank you to Chad and Wendy for setting this up so thank you all thank you Miss Lori I appreciate it and you know I uh, close my part off just by saying uh, again what we're doing is so we're training essential folks and I think that you know the past few weeks have really showed us uh, how quickly the world can change and these jobs that we're uh, preparing students for are, are durable, they're um, resistant, and they can really make a difference in the lives of our, of our students. Uh, of course, the big question is, hey, what's going to happen for fall? You know, these are all very hands-on programs, and uh, of course, we're like you. We're waiting, we're watching to see. Uh, we have great online resources for our students. Um, but you know the magic happens in the classroom and the hands-on part. So uh, we're eager to have our students back uh, just as soon as we can. And, uh, with that, I see uh, Dr. Michelle uh, is there and ready to go. And I appreciate her and all her work for dual enrollment. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it uh, over to her. Then we'll have brief time for questions, and then we'll keep you guys on with the rest of your day, Dr. Michelle. Sorry, uh, I'm on uh, my husband's computer actually, and um, I couldn't get into uh, to Zoom on my computer. I'm having some issues this morning, so I apologize for that. But um, I'm uh, thank you all to the faculty for going through your programs. Um, thank you to everybody who has uh, been on uh, this morning, um, asking questions, uh, getting more information about this. We're very excited about our fall semester. Um, and uh, we just want to make sure that everybody knows what we have to offer through dual enrollment at um, SDCC. So um, our dual enrollment offices can answer any questions that you have. Any of the faculty that have been on today certainly can answer any questions. And um, we're here to serve, uh, to serve our students and uh, we're happy to, to help in any way that we can. So with that being said, uh, Chad, uh, are we going to end now? Uh, yes, ma'am. I just want to give our Zoom participants, those school divisions that are actually on with us uh, uh, live, this uh, opportunity. Uh, if they have a question or two, certainly we can have more in-depth conversations uh, after this. But is there a question out there that we could answer online before we end?
All right, I see some chats and messages and uh, people just saying thanks. So uh, thank you again for your time and please spread the news about these programs. Uh, we really uh, witness the, the power it has to change lives and, and empower students in our region and we care very deeply about that. So uh, we appreciate the work that you do in making these opportunities available to your students and also telling others about it. So again, thank you all. And I hope everyone has a great day.